Hi there, my name is Toby and on this video I want to take you through a private tour of the Natural History Museum here in London. Now on this channel I talk about body dynamics and chi energy, the life force energy. But there's a science to this energy and it's not only in the human body, the chi is in the human body, but it's the same thing in technology, the same energy is also in technology. And I talk about this science. And you can see this mostly in old technology and these old world buildings are really old technology. And they're to do with this ether, this chi, this life force energy. It's a mysterious force. And here, this is the Natural History Museum here. And you can see they're doing some renovation on it. And usually that means they're destroying it and putting something else in. And there you can see the, another modern extension, very different. And here you can see under the city, there's archways. Archways, and this is under the road. So it's, again, very mysterious. There's a lot going on underneath the city. And they're using a, uh, it looks like they're building a pathway to that, so I wonder if they're going to take us in there a bit further. And opposite there, this is the Victoria and Albert Museum, and I'm going to do another video, a follow up where I'll go into there and see some artifacts as well. So stay tuned for the next video in this little series. Uh, but I want to just take you through this building, and even here you can see this pillar outside is very, very old, highly weathered. So there's some interesting questions about these buildings. Uh, and if you study these with an open mind, and I challenge you to take any builder or architect to look at these as well, and look at it just like how would you build this. And I think you'll find that they could not build these today, and even if they could, the cost would be phenomenal. Billions, billions of dollars it would cost to build this, and they'd probably say you couldn't. I, I don't know how we'd even do it. How would we source the materials? How would we create this precision? And how long would it take? How long would it take to build such a thing? So there's a big question as how these things were built and, and the, the history we've been told is just doesn't make sense. The simple folk that we apparently were, we had no power tools, no technology, just a horse and cart and it's mud roads, you know, there's no, no infrastructure, yet we built these things. Now this has got to be millions of tons of stone and in this particular museum here, these are terracotta tiles. This entire building is clad in terracotta tiles. So we must have a million tiles, and they're all different. Very, very complex designs, and you see inside here on the ceiling you've got a flower of life motif, this sacred geometry. And, and these, these buildings are built with such precision, they are so elaborate, so complex, that you've got to ask the question, well these are the questions you've got to ask. How did they build it? Who built it? Because these have got to be built with someone very intelligent. These are master builders, builders we don't have today built this. So who built it? Because it doesn't make sense that little peasants built it. And then you've got to ask the question, why? Why did they bother? Why did they go to all this trouble? And that's really the question that I, I talk about on this channel. Uh, I'll leave links below to other channels that talk a lot about old world history and alternative views to what really happened. Um, but that, those questions don't interest me that much. You see, I, I know for a fact this has to have been built with an intelligence bits people. Uh, this has to have been built with incredible mastery um, and technology because you've got to source this material and create all this. So it has to. So what the details don't matter. But then the question, the real interesting one is why? Why did they do it? Why bother? And it's to collect the etheric energy. Whoever built this believed in the ether. They believed in the life force. And here you can see the main hall empty. Again, a very rare site. This is usually packed full of tourists coming around. But look at the nature of this. The mathematics, the precision, and the geometry. All this geometry is sacred geometry, important geometry. It's not random. Now, and it, but it's artistic as well. You see, all these buildings are different. They've got a freestyle to them. So that's why we think, well, they can't be technology, they're all different, they're all just made up. How can you have made up technology? Well, you can. This is a combination of art and technology. And a combination of art and technology, or art and science, art and mathematics, is the secret to creating or attracting the ether, this mysterious life force energy. And, and this life force, this ether, we've got to understand it, this is metaphysics. This is not a physical energy. It is a pre-manifest force. So how do we get this unmanifest force into manifestation? Well, we do it through architecture, a building like this. This is designed to do just such a thing. You see, the manifest energy is electromagnetism. 
and this thing is also collecting that these are also electrostatic buildings everything inside here is also designed to resonate with electrostatics to hold electric charge but the, the main purpose is this etheric energy they are collecting this this life force this chi energy and it's done through the geometry through the mathematics and through the design you see when you create something beautiful we know this has life force because when we look at it we feel good just, it res we resonate with it we resonate with the image the form and that image that form of beauty gives us a feeling of beauty inside and that feeling is chi that is energizing us that is charging us up so if nothing else whoever built this had a concern for our well-being no, excuse me that's a squirrel jumping on the roof if you heard that but look at all the detail to this building here the, the intricate design it's all animals so whoever built this if it was built as a natural history museum I doubt it I think this is more like a healing temple and you look outside here we've gone outside again but even the metalwork very elaborate very interesting metalwork stuck straight on stone so these must have been gas light but they could also have been free energy this could also have been electrostatics collected to connected to the building and there in the distance that is the Victorian Albert Museum and around here there's many of these old world buildings incredibly elaborate complex structures and they all got millions of tons of stone uh, and they've got deep underground foundations uh, so the, the, the logistics of building these things is so outlandish there is no way a small group of peasants could have built them but you see the secret to this is the mathematics now you'll see uh, and mathematics in, I mean geometry as well as numbers both you see the geometry is very important geometry it's to do with that well the most important mathematics and geometry is to do with this thing called the golden ratio the golden ratio phi is the, the Greek letter phi and it's got a very important mathematics all around it and this mathematics is called incommensurability It's talked about in Pythagorean mathematics but it goes much it, it goes throughout all time this mathematics of course is universal and these guys who ever built this understood this so these archways are very important and you always see numbers three archways go together with a tall one or a bigger one in the middle with two smaller ones on the side and you have triangles as well and these triangles go together with this incommensurable geometry so it's going to be a particular triangle probably a 108 36 36 degree triangle but you also have the golden ratio triangle a golden triangle which is 137 degrees uh, something something it's, it's a bit more complicated and these archways again will be measured there, there's going to be a particular size to them and a numerology to them uh, and, and arches again you see very important because these are also electrostatic you see big arches built all over the world just an arch a great big solid arch what, what, what's the point of building that well that is got again electrical an arch or an arc an arch form is talked about in electric electrical engineering or an arc is when a spark jumps across two things it's called an electrical arc and uh, so this arch is the same thing it's drawing electric currents up from the ground and bridging them across it's helping to bring electric currents up and there you can see the flower of life motif on the ceiling it's all over the place and everyone knows now the flower of life is sacred geometry something important about it something to do with uh, atomic structure and all these different arches on the top complex arches it's not just a sloped roof roof it's a geometrically sloped roof very difficult to build and the precision of this is this laser built precision you can never see any flaws to this and these are all terracotta tiles to, uh, a little these little complex pillars here in the archway terracotta tiles someone has got to have fired all these these are all sculpted molded terracotta and fired and not a single one has got a crack in it so that the, the technology of firing terracotta these don't none of these are flawed none of these are broken so we, we couldn't we couldn't make these tiles now and they all fit together perfectly someone has planned all this and all these tiles have got to be fired off-site brought here and put together this whole thing is built like Lego and again even the stone structure we think oh well the stones were carved no 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 they these are all uh, geopolymer these guys knew how to build stone 
So their sandstone or the stones that build this are more like concrete, but a concrete that forms into stone itself. So you take powdered stone, mix it with some other chemicals, and it sets like concrete over time. So a lot of this, what we think is carved stone, is not. They are made pieces and then put together. That's why it's so precise. And, it, and you can see it here with the terracotta. All this is terracotta tiles on top of stone. But they are all perfect, all precise, had to have made off-site. So someone has to know... Someone has to know exactly what to make and how many to make and what angles they're going to have to fit together. So the plans for this building are phenomenal. Same here now, you've got steel work, perfect steel arches going to this um, uh, four-sided ceiling. And even the, the ironwork there, designs, motifs in it, it's all to do with nature. And the ceilings, we've got herbs, you know, plants painted. So they know plants, they're putting them at the top. Animals are going down the sides. Very interesting. It's moving to higher frequency of energy, moving up to, to the cosmic energy above. So they had an idea about this cos the cosmos, the earth, and the energy around us, this chi, this ether. And, and why create these sculptures, these models of plants, animals, and even people? Of course, we've got sculptures of people. Again, this is to resonate with the energy, the spirit, the ether. When you look at a, 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 an image of a perfect person, you resonate with that, and you you ah, oh, it makes you want to be like that. You're you're tuning into a perfect a perfect human being, and that is helping your body become perfect. And there you got is Charles Darwin, but of course they added this guy later. But even that sculpture in marble, I'll talk about this in the, in the next video. A lot of that is is cast. It's not carved marble. It's cast marble stone, and it's difficult to spot the difference. But even that means they've got very high technology that we we don't have today and here you can see the floor and these buildings are very interesting they're not cold they stay warm in winter and they're cool in summer they've got very clever heat circulation systems uh, so that again we don't even understand it people have looked into it and they can't understand how it works so and we've got very primitive buildings compared to these what, what these guys made here and that of course you saw the yoga class here this is the cafeteria so you, you, again we built a so-called museum this incredible building and all we put in it is a, is is terrible we put a little cafeteria and a few little stuffed animals you know what we actually put inside this building is pathetic compared to the building itself so whoever built this building did not do it just to put a few stuffed animals in here and, and pile a few piles of bones and now we've got a little computer screen and a few cheap paintings you know i'll take you through a bit in a, in a minute but th the purpose of this building was much more important than the one we've given it now we just say oh we like these things we like it, it inspire or we want grandiose yeah but we we attached importance to that feeling of awe uh, and it's more than just random things like I said there is alignment there is resonance there's geometry there is mathematics and it is all well thought out someone has put a lot of thought into this and a lot of understanding the geometry is not random it is specific incommensurable geometry it is a geometry of phi the golden ratio it is geometry that connects to the very creation of the universe you see, mathematics is unmanifest reality. Mathematics is the ether. And if we create something with this perfect mathematics, it, it draws the ether down, or it manifests ether, or it helps to transform ether into electromagnetism, which is manifest. See, electromagnetism is manifested energy. Um, anyway, now I've come out again, and now we're going across the road, this is leading up to the next video, so here you can see the Victorian Albert Museum, and go down that road, Exhibition Road, there's a lot of old world buildings, magnificent structures. Now here opposite, this is the, I think it's the Ismaili Centre, this is a modern building, but this is about the best we can do, this is all granite, and hard and handmade wood, very complex, elaborate uh, building here, but it's pathetic compared to these old world buildings. So again, that was a lot of money spent on that. And here's another old world building. You can see here, this is a mud flood building. But you know that because the building, the, the windows go underground. And they're going underground at a slope. And you see the front door is underground here. They just excavated down here to get to the front door. But at the side, they didn't bother. And no one's going to build a little half window. And you can see some of them go below as well. You know, these are all added. But this is what they call mud flood buildings. And you, you see them everywhere. And all over London, we've got these... You know the building has been built lower down and then we've got a slope across it so that that it doesn't make sense to have done that 
the only thing that could have happened is more earth has been built in. You know, we had a massive mud flood. Something happened to bury these, and then all we did, it came back later and excavated around it, just enough to get in and empty the inside. And that last bit there you saw was the Victorian Albert Museum. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a video soon, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in one of these other videos here.